We present The Dark Horse by Ruma Godden, dramatised by Leon Orkin, with Dervla Malloy as Sister Morag, Nicholas Grace as Mr Levantine, and Johan Meredith as Ted. Our convent stands between the main circular road in Calcutta and the race course where John Quillen exercises his horses. At this hour, the ground is covered with mist. Not the morning mist that I remember, drifting over the green Irish countryside, but the swirling mist of dust over a teeming city. The story I'm to tell you, many thought a miracle. Perhaps it was. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure what a miracle is. I leave you to judge. And whether without Dark Invader being shipped over from England, we would have been able to continue our work. We Sisters of Poverty have a curious form of bookkeeping. First we search out the needy, the helpless, and take them in. And then we find the means to look after them. The day Dark Invader and Ted Mullins, his stable lad, the English are the only people who have the neck, to call a 40-year-old man a lad were due to dock. John Quillen called to see me. He and I share a love of horses and we often talk of them. But this morning he'd come on business. Uh, Mr Levantine wants to buy this site. Buy? The convent? Why? And who is Mr Levantine? Casimir Alaric Bruce Levantine. New client. Ambitious and wealthy. Uh He's a bit flashy for my taste, but he loves his horses. He's shipping some over from England. We need extra stabling. John. Oh, come on, Mother. You don't need an orchard, vegetable garden, a forest of mangoes and jacarandas in the centre of Calcutta. <laughs> what you do need is money. Sell. Impossible. You want to build a new infirmary? We will. In time, the need is there. We fill it. You have to trust that the means will follow. Here is our haven, which we share with 200 others. It matters that our old men and women end their days in what for them is a place of incomparable beauty and comfort. Move where the land is cheap. We have to be here, near the alleys and the gutters where the poor live, near to the kitchens and the restaurants who give us their leftovers. You know, some nights we feed as many as a thousand souls out there. So the answer's no. No offence to Mr Levantine. We are, of course, beggars, and that's not easy. You have to be humble and disciplined to hold your hand out, to smile and say, God bless you, when the door is slammed in your face. But I understand. We remind people of what they'd rather forget. Now, if we had orphans rather than the old, (laughs) but they're so much more attractive. But we have our lifelines. Old Solomon for one. Steady on, old boy. Not going to hurt. We had a very heavy load last night. A grand dinner at the Viceroy's house with lots and lots of leftovers. How you women lift those metal containers, I can't imagine. All hands on deck. Even Reverend Mother. Good morning, Captain. Morning, Mother. Morning, Quillen. Uh, Morning, Mac. He needs new shoes and rest. We go on foot in the afternoon. But people give more money if we've got Solomon with us. They love you. Don't they, The night rounds that we can't do without them. Could you collect in the morning? Food goes off from the heat of the day. I look into the emergency fund. I have some shoes at the stable I can send over. John Quillen, you're very kind. (laughs) First the needs, then the means, (laughs) Mother. (laughs) God bless you. I'm off down the quay to collect Mr Levantine's horses. Levantine? Why the heaven are you taking on an outsider like that? I hear the Bengal Club turned down his application. They turned down mine, too. Will you come over later and have a look at them, Mac? Uh, I'll come now. Want a lift? Oh, thank you. Uh, bye, Mother. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 That's two for Lady Mater, three for Casimir and Levantine. Two mares and a young colt. The mare seems to have sound legs. Now, last one over now. Dark Invader. Brown colt, off hind fetlock white. Uh, from Michael Traherne's stable. Big fellow. Yeah, 17 hands. Unplaced since the first win at Lingfield, 1931. Nearly two years ago. Hmm. What did Levantine see there, I wonder? Looks a good one. Good morning, sir. Ah, you must be from Mr. Traherne. Uh, Yes, sir. The name is Mullins. Ted Mullins. Dark invaders there. John Quillen. I trained for Mr. Levantine. Uh, This is Captain Mack, veterinary surgeon to the jockey club. Good morning, sir. Morning. 
And this is Dark Invader. <laughs> Certainly fills the eye. He's a bloody lovely horse, sir, and a gentleman, too. Well, let's get him home. Uh, Mr. Sadiq! Yes, sir. Oh, will it be in order with you, sir, if I walk the Invader? A long walk, all of three miles. After tramping round them decks, we could both do with the exercise. And the Invader will feel a bit strange. He's used to me, sir. It's a question of protocol. Uh, Mr. Sadiq will be the horse's groom. Uh, we call the groom's Sices out here. He's expecting to take charge of the horse, and if he doesn't, well, it's a loss of face. Uh, I see, sir. Would he, uh, Mr. Sadiq, is it? Uh, would he mind if I walked along? Uh, Sadiq! Yes, sir. This is Mr. Mullins. Good day, Mr. Sadiq. Uh, I'll walk along if that's all right with you. Good day, Mr. Mullins. <laughs> he's fast, eh? Oh, he's fast, all right. <laughs> Now, now, steady, boy. Yeah. Steady. Yeah, steady. No one who saw that walk would ever forget it. The little Englishman in his shirt and celluloid collar and the huge, handsome, lazy horse that had already filled Sadiq's eyes with motherly pride. Ted had never seen so many people, some in only a loincloth, some with yokes across their shoulders and it seemed many people lived in the street. And the smells, sweat, urine, wood smoke, and a heavy sweetness when a flower seller passed by. He saw a woman in a soft flowing sari with flowers in her hair, her midriff bare. Blimey! And through all this, Dark Invader passed unruffled, quite calm in this, his first encounter with his public. Ted, come and join us. Oh, uh, thanks, Mr. Quillen. Been watching the grooming? Uh, yes. Uh, everything to your liking? It's to the invader's liking, all right. Mr. Sadiq was massaging his neck something beautiful. Uh, oh, uh, let me introduce my wife. Oh, uh, how do you do, Mrs. Quillen? Can he call me Dahlia? Oh, that's for Ted to decide. A uh, drink? Uh, no, thank you, sir. Uh, never touch it. Not these days, anyway. Mr. Mullins, how long will you be staying with us? At six weeks, Mr. Traherne said, until the horse is settled in. Maybe you want to buy gifts to take home to your wife, your children? Uh, my wife? Uh, I've got no wife now, Mrs. Quillen. There's no children. But I might buy something to take back to the Traherne's young'uns. We'll go to the bazaar, can we, John? <laughs> Not everybody enjoys shopping as much as you do, my dear. But it's such fun, all the colours and many amusements. I want to show Mr Mullins. Hey, you show Ted to his rooms. You'll have your own bungalow and servants. Oh, all right, sir. Oh, this is a note from Mr Traherne about the invader. Uh -huh. He asked me to give it to you. Look at this, Mac. Dark Invader's got one hell of a record. One hell of a horse. He had a first win and nothing after. Mm. His form on the horse gallops is still unbeatable, but not when he's in public. It cannot be physical, or it'll be there all the time, horse gallops and all. If we could find the problem, we'd probably cure it, but it's more likely all in the mind. You mean a sound horse that won't try under pressure is one that's been whipped at the finish of a race... He's learnt that if he takes the lead, he'll be punished. The shadow of remembered pain. Mm. I doubt we'll find the source of the problem. Eleven times aiming at the Viceroy's cup. <laughs> the confidence of a new boy. If Dark Invader gets near that, I'll eat my heart. Oh, well, let's go through. I think Ted may have already spotted something. That man has got eyes like a hawk. It was when Mr Sadiq was strapping him up. A muscle in his neck twitched. Mr Sadiq began to stroke the place. That horse was grinning with pleasure. I reckon Mr Sadiq knows a thing or two about horses. It might do the trick. What trick? Well, show that the invader can be a winner after all. Dark invader was thoroughly vetted before he was brought. Nothing wrong was found. Well, you can't see nothing, sir. But put your hand here. Uh, no, no, no. Here. And with pressure. <laughs> It was that Tom Bacon what began it. Those damned bow legs of his. Nutcrackers squeezing a horse in a place God never met a man's legs to be. But he rides so short, you see. The invader was nothing but a big, great, sprawling baby. And it was his first race. But they were set on a win, no matter what. Was the horse marked after the race? No, sir. Wouldn't eat for a week, but no mark. Mm. 
After that, they tried him at Doncaster. He put bacon over his head and bolted. Same at Newbury. Only that time, he wouldn't even let him mount. It, it wasn't the invaders, sir. It was streaky, sir. Streaky as they come. I tried telling Mr Traherne. He wouldn't listen. Oh, jockey with that reputation. If he can't master a horse, he'll make sure it's the horse that suffers. Get me something to stand on. Thank you, sir. All right. Now let's look at that mighty neck. Oh, there's a wee scar under some white hairs. Could have been cut when he was still a foal. Uh, press harder. <laughs> oh, steady, oh. steady. Pressure causes pain. Must have hurt like hell when that streaky bacon's grip just caught it. <laughs> You've located the problem, Mac. You clever old thing. Well, don't thank me. It's Ted and Sadiq. Massage is the best treatment, but don't forget there's the strain of the finish. Other horses challenging, noise, excitement, all that tells Darkie, stop before it hurts. Mm. You know as well as I do, John, a spoiled horse never comes back. The invader was never no trouble with me, sir. And now that he belongs to Mr... Levantine. Uh, Levantine, yeah. Dark invader can, can have another chance. I know he can still be a winner. I'm glad you came, Ted. Thank you, sir. So am I. Perhaps you can show me how you ride, will you? Will I? <laughs> the following morning, John Quillen watched Ted with Dark Invader. How the big horse walked, then trotted round the circuit, doing as he was told, enjoying inspecting some sheep, a basket full of cow dung, a vulture pecking at some small dead animal without faltering in his steady trotting, and when they'd finished, nosing in Ted's pocket. Uh, thanks, Ted. Uh, just one more thing. Yes, sir? He then asked Ted to take out a 12-year-old gelding with a hardened mouth and soured temper. Ali, Quillen's own jockey, came to watch. Cheer up, old cuddy. It isn't such a bad old world. Well, well. The old English long reign. I never thought to see it in this city. Is English star? It uh, was. He's got the touch of the craftsman. Very nice ride. Ridden with the best in your day, haven't you, Ted? Well, I did quite a lot. A pre-war derby four times. <laughs> Never in the frame, though. Well, come to think of it, I was third in the Oaks once and fifth twice. Yeah. And what are you doing now when you're not seeing the world free of charge? You still riding? No. <laughs> Retired from all that. Didn't do much after the war. Didn't seem to matter. You see, I lost my wife in the flu epidemic. 1918, that was. Oh, I'm sorry. Well... Man in his own like me don't need very much. Must admit there was a bit of whiskey. <laughs> More than a bit. Then the invader came from Ireland. After that it was just him. <laughs> oh, he's a lovely horse. I never got round to thinking that one day he'd be sold. I'll miss him something terrible. I was interested in your finish at the long reign. Oh. Seems a lost art. <laughs> the boys nowadays can't drive a horse unless they're chewing its ears off. <laughs> It's interesting, too, that you don't ride as short as most. Well, when I was a boy, it was all straight legs, toes down. I never took to the very short style. <laughs> like streaky. <laughs> legs double up like a frog. <laughs> Can I come in, Ted? Oh, Mrs Quillen, please. I brought you some tea with milk, English style. Oh, thanks. Oh, what are you doing, Ted? All these things, looking after your clothes, cleaning your shoes, is for your bearer to do, not you. I'm used to looking after myself. It's hard to break the habit. You have to let them do it out of respect, not for you, but for them. They will feel hurt and think you don't trust them. I would like you to see something of India before your return. We can make a tour. Darjeeling and see the snows, Everest. Oh, they're lovely. And Delhi, Agra and the Taj Mahal, oh, they're lovely too. And the Ajanta Caves and the... To tell you the truth, I'm, I'm not one for sightseeing. And the bit of injury I want to see is right here. If it's all right with your husband, I'd like to stay a bit longer. Take a later boat. 
Don't think they'd miss me back in Blighty. Blighty? Oh, oh, that's what we Cockneys call England. Blighty? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Dark invader took to India as though he'd been born a Maharaja. The heat suited his powerful physique and indolent nature. His groom, Sadiq, lived and slept on the veranda outside his charge's box and five times a day turned his face towards Mecca. The cooperation between horse and man was complete. The great handsome head would come down to be groomed to have the head collar put on, to accept the bridle, and Ted watched this with mixed feelings. Ah, that's it. That's a good massage you do, Mr. Sadiq. Huh? It's not a wince from him. Mm. You deserve every penny you earn. Eighteen rupees a month. Struth. Yeah, that's... That's less than seven shillings a week. Oh, it's enough to buy food and send ten rupees home to my wife and children in Bihar. What? They don't live with you. I take one month to go and see them, but this year I, I not go. You must see your wife and children. I won't go. I, I stay with him. Well, I'd be here to look after him. I can groom him. I won't go. But when Ted complained to John Quillen... These are my stables and my sizes, and it's not the custom... In India, we don't go against custom. The last workout was in the cool of the evening. Sister Ignatius and I watched from the window as the cars arrived, bringing the owners to gossip, walk, talk and visit their horses, feeding them sugar cane, carrots... And apples? Reverend Mother, just think what they cost... Mr. Levantine's car was as different from every other car as he was from their owners. A large Minerva, deep blue. And a horn the shape of a brass serpent. Did you ever? Wearing a pale grey suit, folded white silk handkerchief in the breast pocket, a pink rose in his buttonhole, Mr. Levantine advanced through the groups of other owners who were casually dressed in sports jackets and flannels. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Try, sir. Who's this? Uh, Ted Mullins, sir. Ah, I remember. The Dark Invader stable lad. I want to thank you, sir. Not just for me, but for having faith in the Invader. I don't like to see such breathing and beauty thrown onto the scrap heap. The Invader won't let you down, sir. Hmm. I like you. Johnny, this man must stay with the horse. Well, he works for Trahern. Trahern? Settled terms, Johnny. Any terms you like, but this man stays. I like him, Johnny. More important, the horse likes him. He was quite a well-known jockey before the war, but I guess he's lost his license. Not mixed up with any dirty work, I hope. Mullins was caught up in something, of which he was quite innocent. But you know how these things stick. That man's a rider. Dark invader's rider. What do you say, Johnny? You're a perceptive man, Mr. Levantine. Do you think you can get him a license? I always get what I want. Which reminds me, have you got any news about the convent site? Hmm. Dark Invader. A well-bred horse with a questionable racing record, and you want him ridden by his lad. Ted Mullins. Hmm. Mullins. A name I remember. I want to ask you if Mullins can have a license to ride here. On your rogue horse? He's no rogue, Sir Humphrey. He only needs to be ridden in a style that doesn't frighten him. Mullins is the man to do that. He lost his license in England, but is there any reason why he shouldn't ride here? Would you be so kind as to look into it? As a newcomer to the racing world, I will be guided by your judgment and advice. I can look into it, certainly. And if your Mullins and mine are the same, I owe him a good turn. I often had a bet on him when I was a young barrister, and the nimble shilling was hard to come by. Thank you, thank you, Your Honour. Sir Humphrey, another brandy? There. I didn't think violets grew here. 
Your sweet peas. You have them in England too? Yeah. Oh, I want to visit one day. John's promised, but it's so expensive. Oh, how hot it is. How can you wear a collar? I've done all my life. You're a very proper man, Ted. My wife always gave great importance to a neat personal appearance. I'm sad I'll never meet her. Oh, I, I, uh, I can show you a photo. Oh, please! Oh, she has a very neat appearance. She was a teacher. I have so much to learn. She believed in me. Made me feel like a king when she said she'd marry me. John made me feel like a princess. When we married, the other officers wouldn't talk to him. Wouldn't come to the wedding. He said he didn't want to talk to them anyway because they're all snobs and bores. Mm. The day before he proposed to me, he said to me, let me take you home. And I was so surprised. I said, my home? And he said, yes, your home. And now India is his home too. But you know, Ted, sometimes I think he does miss Blighty. Ted? He's got you. And I've got the invader. Invader looks like a wild beater. <laughs> Sadiq and Ted are a great team. Oh, they've worked hard. Every trainer needs a winner. It's been a lonely ride sometimes. I had ambitions, running a stud, of being up there with the best, but well, I said goodbye to all that. Someone like Traherne handles the cream of the Irish, has the potential to breed Gold Cup winners, while here, well, new owners learning the ropes, weak stock. But Levantine? Ah, he's been talking to Sir Humphrey about Mullins. If he wants something, he goes all out to get it. Oh, right. <laughs> the only person so far who said no to him <laughs> was Mother Morag. <laughs> Mr. Levantine, you did this for me? Not for you, for myself. I've been watching you. I want you up on Dark Invader. You've been excellent with the horse, and I should like to give you this. Well, that's very kind, sir, but I don't need extra money. It's what you've done, sir, that counts. Not without you. Please, take it. I'm sorry, sir, I can't. <laughs> what am I to do with it, then? Every day as I walk across to the coast... The things I see, it's... Well, sir, if you really want to make me happy, give it to the RSPCA. Oh. Or to them nuns who feed the old people. That'd be something. I mean, you're so rich, sir. Think of what you could give. Give? If I'm rich, it's because my money is for use to reward those who are worthy, not for derelicts. But, Mr Levantine, sir... No, I've no right. You rescued Dark Invader. I bought him for my own advantage. I believe in that horse. And God bless you for that, sir. Give it to the nun, sir. It had been a terrible, hot summer in Calcutta, and the rains were late in breaking, which meant there was a fear of famine. The price of rice was high, and the peasants were flocking in from the villages. To order such expensive food and then not eat it the height of gluttony. Without us, we shouldn't be able to feed the poor. Mm. I do wonder, Mother, if without such gluttony, there'd be the poor. How long have we had Solomon? Mm. He's getting tired. Mm. He wasn't all that young when he came. No. He was a gift. Bed for us all soon, eh, Solomon? Mother, I do believe the rains are breaking. <gasps> you can almost hear the plants drinking it in. <laughs> I want to dance in the puddles. <laughs> the monsoon isn't called the sickly season for nothing. The poor were afflicted with fever, chills, pleurisy. And even babies died, and children. There was no rest, and precious little to eat. John Quillen had sent a rug for Solomon, but for the humans in our care, we could offer little comfort. It was a cruel time. And after the rains came the cold. Oh, 
Mama talked to me today. I said, hi, I'm Dr. Monday. Hurry up. Reverend Mother. <clears throat> Come in, Sister Ignatius. What's the time? Five o'clock. Will you sleep now, Mother? First, I'll watch the horses. I'd almost forgotten the racing season begins. They'll be exercising for the start tomorrow. Oh, you see that one? At the back. The big dark horse. Oh, he's a beauty. Oh, that easy movement. There's something about his rider. He rides him long with a long rein, as my father taught me when I was a girl. I never thought to see that here. Ted, you look so handsome in the silks. Thanks. You know why I have these colours, Ted? Pink for happiness and green for hope. Are you nervous? Well, the crowd seem to like the invader, Mr Quillen. That's good. <laughs> He's that vain. But yeah, I'm anxious. It's been 15 years. Good luck, Mr Marlene. Thanks. It's a huge field. If they crowd you, go for the outside rail, yeah. remember? Now, you're under starter's orders. Right. Thank you, sir. Come on. They're off! Keep clear, Ted! Clear! That's the way! Don't let them crowd you! Look at that stride, Johnny! He could walk it, I tell you! Ah, oh, that's class for you! What no one had expected was the impact of Dark Invader on the crowd. The whole of Calcutta took him to their hearts. It was partly his size, partly his good looks, but mostly his lazy way of nuzzling Mr Levantine's pockets after a race, as if to say, that's nothing at all. And Ted was becoming a legend as well. Everyone knew how Darkie would not let anyone else ride or mount him. On the days when they went onto the track, the crowds gathered like fans outside the stage door of a matinee idol. Here he comes! Good evening, Levantine. Levantine, congratulations. Yes, well done. Good evening. Sorry. Good evening. Thank you, thank you, gentlemen. Welcome to our newest member. Yes. 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 Well, your horse seems to become something of a personality. Everyone's talking about him. Even the bearers. Of course, he's now eligible for the Viceroy's Cup. Where did you find this Mullins chap? He seems to be a winner. I owe him to Sir Humphrey. I must admit, it'd be fun if Ted Mullins beats all the top price English jockeys who'll be brought over for the big race next week. <laughs> <laughs> Got any tips for the Gold Cup, Mr. Levantine? Gold Cup? Ah, yes, the Gold Cup. Mrs. Quillan! Johnny, can I come in? John! Mr. Levantine is here! I want to leave a few tokens of my appreciation for your excellent work. I've still got ten days before the season's over. The cup, I know, the cup. But Christmas first. You look like Santa Claus. A drink? I never drink, but since you do... <laughs> a crate of whiskey! Oh, John! Very kind. Mrs. Quillan. Can I open it now? Can we stop you? <laughs> Well, so soft, such lovely colours. Oh, and a necklace. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I shall wear them both for my father's birthday party tomorrow. We're going to Badwan to see him. How long for? Just one night. Who's in charge in your absence? It's an important time. Ted'll be in charge. It's one night, Mr Levantine. We only get there once a year. Make sure it's only one night. Where is Ted? I've got his present. He's in his room. Today's a sad day for him. It was his wedding day. Then send it over with his servant. Mr. Levantine appreciates those who worked so hard to make this one hell of a season. Now, Johnny, only one night away. One night. Ted! 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 Can I come in? Have you seen the present from Mr. Levantine? I've not looked yet, Mrs. Quillen. 
He'd given Mr. Sadiq a lovely gold watch, and John has ten bottles of whiskey. Oh, ten. A saddle. Oh, the leather is so soft. He's too generous. And look at my presents. A scarf in his racing colours, and this necklace. You think it will suit me? You'll make every head in the stand turn, Mrs. Quillen. I'll wear it tomorrow at Father's party. I know today is one for remembering Mrs. Mullins, but don't be too sad, Ted, please. Dahlia! Just had me thoughts. Mr. Levantine's leaving! I'd better go. Dahlia! The moon shone down on the Quillen stables, throwing long shadows across the lawn, on the verandas that ran around Ted's bungalow. Quillen had given instructions to Ted to oversee the horses next morning. If there's anything wrong, tell the babu to ring Captain Mac. Yes, sir. I'm sure there'll be no need. And, Ted, do the stable round tonight. Yes, sir. The lights in the main house went out one by one. John Quillen and Dahlia prepared to leave. Ted watched them where they stood in the garden. I have a new dress. Plum colour, your favourite. He could see the moonlight catch her hair and the necklace on her bare neck. Mm -hmm. What's that perfume? Queen of the night. Mm. Rat Kirani. <laughs> Sweet. John. A little later, the Quillen car drove off. Ted, alone, went to his room. Eggs, sides, clots for washing. Uh, nothing tonight, Tom. Oh, the side is not well. I got things in my mind. Just leave it, eh? I think you remember your beloved dead mother. What you want about? The picture. The lady with the curtain on her head. That's not my mother. Hey. Now, get out. Hey. You hear me? Hey. Just hey. get out. Hey. This... Mr. Mullins, you want something? I can come and see me own horse if I want to, can't I? He's very sleepy. I gave him extra rub down tonight. Bet you did. Even his horse ignoring him was too much for Ted. Alone with his thoughts, he felt confused and afraid. Perhaps he didn't want to be a jockey again. Maybe he couldn't win the gold cup. Crowds, noise, the pressure of all that money riding on him. He felt fearful. Mr Levantine lay alone in his carved mahogany bed in his sumptuous apartment in Park Street. He too felt uneasy. Should he go and take a look at his horse? But he didn't, and Ted was left to his own company. The heady smells of the Indian night were suffocating him. Was that drumming inside or outside his head? Branches brushed his face and the rustling leaves sounded like a woman's whisper. Then he remembered. Or more accurately, he decided to forget. He went into the main house and opened one of the bottles of whisky that Mr Levantine had bought for John Quillen. Two hours and a bottle and a half later, he staggered out into the garden and made his way to the stables. In his drunken state, he decided to take Dark Invader and go back home to England. Come on, open up! Open up! Open the door! Dead, oh. dead, sir. What would you do? Get out of my way, you even. Huh? Let me see me horse. Who are you, anyway? I've never seen you before. Fancy yourself with horses, do you? Thief! 
Safe! Dead Saib! Saib, no! Mind your own bloody business! This is no good. Killing Saib no like. No good invader! Go to hell! I'm taking him out! No! Dead Saib! He fell down. Who? Solomon, come quickly. He fell just past Aram Tola. Gulab walked beside him, but when we loaded the canisters outside Furpos, it couldn't move. Just stopped. We had to make him come home. It felt so cruel. Oh, Mother. That's quite right. Let me look and get Captain Mack. Quickly. Yes, Mother. Now, now, old lad. Tetanus. Shh, old boy, don't be afraid. It's not long now. Shh. Stand back, everyone! Oh, hi. God rest your soul, old friend. Right! Captain Mack will arrange the rest and best start to unload the canisters. After this? Of course, we're not going to let Solomon's last efforts go to waste. <laughs> After the canisters had been unloaded, I gathered the sisters together to pray. Sister Ignatius, fetch Gulab. I do, in our chapel. I think it would help him. They pray too. And leave the gates open so that the people can come in and lay their flowers. Dear God, help me in my need. I know I have the general fund, but that is low. Help me remember that God doesn't think like me, and when one belongs to him, one mustn't worry. We all heard it. The clatter of hooves on stone, a whinny, we ran out into the courtyard. An angel has sent it. It's a miracle. The horse is distressed. He must be rubbed down and fed. You have been sent to us, my beauty. And we thank God for you. Ted. Ted. Wake up, man. What was the time? After ten o'clock. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm late. Late. <laughs> you may like to know that in your absence, or because of your absence, Dark Invader has disappeared. Congratulations. A horse can't vanish. There must be a plot. Mr. Lee, tell Mr. Levantine exactly what happened. From the beginning. When Mr. Ted did on uh, Mr. Marins, <sighs> so I take Dark Invader for exercise. Uh, Not easy crossing road. Uh, and then I do one, two circuits, and then... Then? Mm. Tell us! When we come back, there was two English jockeys in paddock, watching. <sighs> and when Dark Invader come in, they look at him. Hey, Streaky, that's the horse we've got to beat for the Viceroy Cup. Never edited this season. Here, Chinky, you in charge here? Is Mr. Bacon? I see your photo in paper. Yeah. The finals. <laughs> Come off it, Streaky. It's Dark Invader. You've ridden him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. His first race, Lingfield. 
We won, as expected. Uh, you rode him again, Doncaster. He dumped you and ran home. Yeah. <laughs> didn't like it, Streaky. That horse hated your guts. Never beat a horse that didn't take to me. <laughs> Do you want any work written? How about it, eh, Chinky? Tell him back at the stable, Streaky Bacon, done exercising your horse. Would be an honour, sir. Oh. Blimey, why you ride him so long? It's old-fashioned. Not the ruddy man in police. I've shortened the letters. Go on. Five holes, that's it. All right, leg up. Hey, look out. Uh, uh, we'll see who's boss. <laughs> Yo! Oh, ah! You're a okay, You are. Oh, it's bolted. Come back. Come back. Darky! Oh. I take the flash right and follow Dark Invader. Side road empty. Traffic roaring down Charingi. No one is to be told about this. No one. Oh, what do we do now, Mr. Quillen? My beautiful horse. The sisters christened our heaven-sent gift, Beauty. He had a deep cut from a whip, which I bathed. We settled him in Solomon's old stall. He made no attempt to leave, but slipped into his new life with an amiable ease. I marked out a track in the vegetable garden and walked him three times a day until he was quite restored. Sister Barbara, we need the bishop's quilt. Whatever for? Solomon's blankets aren't warm enough. We'll use the quilt off the bishop's bed. <laughs> Are we going to put Beauty in the cart tonight? Don't be silly. He's a racehorse. He'd kick the cart to pieces. And he's no use to us. We'll see. When Captain Mac arrives, ask him up to my office. This is unusually formal, Mother. Will you look out of the window and tell me what you see? Holy mackerel. Dark invader. Who on earth brought him here? No one on earth. That's what my sisters think. After Solomon died, we prayed. In fact, we were in chapel when we heard his hooves. Extraordinary. He was alone, but saddled and bridled. He must have thrown his rider. My sisters think the horse was looking for something. What? Sanctuary. The horse came of his own accord? Mm -hmm. He was lathered, distressed, and he was crushed by a whip. Couldn't have been Mullins or any of Quillen's boys. He's a valuable animal in prime condition and needs exercise. I've arranged that. And grooming. And we lengthened Solomon's sir single with crepe bandages. I don't know what you're up to, but you deserve to succeed. You've got a sure touch with a horse, Mother. <laughs> My father was Rattler Dawson. I ought to know these things. Hmm? You, uh, you know who Dark Invader is? Yes. Favourite for the Viceroy's cop. There must be a lot of money on that horse. As veterinary surgeon of the Turf Club, I'm bound to tell the owner where his horse is. Please do. You found him? I was uh, called in to see him. He's injured. Where? Oh. In the convent of the Sisters of Poverty. Oh, in God's name. How did he get there? In God's name. Precisely. Their horse died the same night. The sisters believe that Dark Invader took sanctuary with them as a divine answer to their loss. Oh. You refuse to give him back? We'll have to think very carefully before something makes us change our minds. I want to see the head nun. I am the head nun. You? The horse is due to race in five days. What a disappointment for you. I'm not accustomed to being disappointed. What an exceptional person you must be. I won't keep you longer, Mr. Leventine. <sighs> Dear God, guide me. We'll have to hire two ticker garries for the night round. Hunger doesn't take a holiday, but I must be steady. I must have faith. Lord, help me to do what is right. Ah! <sighs> That mother Morag! That nun! Mind you, she must have been a good-looking girl. <laughs> Let her put Dark Invader in between the shafts. Let her teach her a lesson. It wasn't for the cup, but I... But there is the cup. We must try to talk around. 
I'll go this time. I'm coming with you. The horse, once forced to race against its will, was handed by your man to his tormentor, and when it refused, was given a cruel cut, and so it bolted, blind with fear and pain. Have you finished? That is the story, and it will spread, as long as Dark Invader is here. I demand my horse! The Sisters of Poverty take an extra vow. The vow of hospitality. No one is turned away, not even a horse. Ah! How do you explain that when Dark Invader bolted, he turned and trotted not into your stable such a short way off, but in here? Why? We don't know. Well, nobody knows, but we sisters can guess. <laughs> you may be a nun, but you're devilish clever. Ah. Not devilish, I hope, and certainly not clever. But what we're good at is begging. Not an easy thing to learn, especially if you're born proud. But if you believe, it gives people a chance. For what? To become providence, which is of God. What most people call miracles is normal for us. We had a need, and by God's providence we were sent a horse. I agree his ways are sometimes difficult to follow, but perhaps God has chosen you for his providence. I don't want to be chosen. I want my property. Have you ever been hungry, Mr. Leventine? No. I work hard and spend with care. No one is hungry except through their own carelessness. We all reap our own harvest. We have a hundred destitute elderly within these walls. At night, we collect scraps of food, scraps of money from people like you. Our sisters go round the offices, and your office is one of the few who have never given. <sighs> it seems that <laughs> Levantine and Sons cannot afford a single Anna. Afford? I could buy this entire place. How much for Dark Invader? Money? No, not money, Mr. Leventine. Now, if you could give us a carriage horse, <sighs> used to harness, not too young, not too old, one that Captain Mack and Mr. Quillen approve. <laughs> Madame, I think you'll find I'm as good a judge of a horse as anyone. I found the Dark Invader. If I don't have him back in 24 hours, there won't be time to get him ready before the race. Ah, Madame, I give you my promise. Not a promise. A horse. Three hours later, Mr. Leventine was back in a smart spring buggy with a good-looking bay horse in the shafts. No. Thank you. No, thank you. That horse is 20. Look at that corner tooth. I'll tell you his whole story. Sometime I'd say he sprained a tendon and the injury has calloused. So no, thank you. You're supposed to be a nun, not a horse breeder. An hour later, flushed and pink all over, Levantine reappeared with a red roan. Arched neck, splendid Arab tail, vigorous and intelligent. Hmm. I should like to try him. Try him? You mean... I mean, until he's driven or ridden. Oh, of course, of course. But we'll drive him in the cart. Uh, it's much more difficult than a beautifully sprung buggy. Uh, where shall I drive you? I'll drive. Ah. Uh. This is impossible. Take the buggy as well. What would we do with the buggy? It'd crumble under the weight of our canisters. But since you're so generous, can I suggest that the cost of the buggy would repair our cart? You shall have a new one. Mr. Leventine, God bless you. Oh, thank you. Yes. Ah, me. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been blessed before. Now, if you would consider selling your sight, I could give you enough money for you never to have to beg again. There is no question of us moving. Does it really matter where you live? Of course it matters. Nuns don't take holidays. The sisters have to keep healthy and sane. We also have to be near our work. Here, where the poor live. Off the scraps left by the rich. No, Mr. Leventine. But thank you for your offer. Oh, you're a difficult woman. However, if things are otherwise to your satisfaction, we can arrange for the return of Dark Invader. My advice is to let his own rider fetch him. (laughs) 
Mullins, why aren't you with your horse? I, I heard him in sound, but I, I thought he was out of the race. Who asked you to think? But I'm out. Who says? But Mr. Quillen. Who employs you? You, sir. My orders are that you come and get this animal out of this ridiculous situation and bring him home at once. You're the only one to do it, Teddy. We all gathered in the courtyard as Mr Levantine returned with John Quillen and Ted. A crowd had formed outside the gates to watch. Ted was immaculate in his shirt and tie with a clean handkerchief in his top pocket. He walked towards the vegetable garden where Dark Invader was idling. How will you take him home? I'll ride him, sir. I'll open the back gates. No, through the front. He must leave with the crowd. Can you manage that, Teddy? Dark invader and me, we're used to crowds. I'll open the gates, then. Mr Quillen, sir? Go to it, Ted. Well, miss you, beauty. Oh, I do hope you'll win. I suppose you mustn't pray for racing. But we can pray for you. All of us will pray. Dark invader with the tiny figure of Ted Mullins seated across him, made his progress through the crowd like royalty. People offered gillips, marigolds made a carpet along the road, and garlands were hung over their heads. Dark Invader accepted all this graciously, as though he knew it was his due. In minutes they were safely home. Mr Sadiq! Malin Saab! I reckon he's been missing his massage. Boxing Day. The day of the Viceroy's Cup. The greatest day of the racing year. Flags fly over the stands. Banks of flowers. White, yellow, orange. No lawns ever greener. No ropes and rails ever whiter. And the track stretching like an emerald ribbon in the sunlight of the Bengal winter. The one race I should really have liked to watch. I, who thought I should never want to see a race again. Now, Ted, it's a big field, but you just have to watch out for bacon. Save everything for the last stretch and keep clear of the pack. Right. Now, you'd better weigh in. Look, down by the rails. Isn't that the head nun? Where? Oh. <laughs> Is Mother Morag having a flutter? <laughs> Good omen, Johnny. Explain to me about arts, oh, Mother. Dark Invader is the favourite. If he wins, everyone doubles their money. Now that is what I call a miracle. And they're off. They're all there. Hold fast leads, followed by quarterdeck, racing people to Dark Invader moving up on the rails. Three furlongs to go towards the last final sharp end. There's a bunch gathering on outside. the end. Dark Invader seems pulled Outside! Out straight into outside. He's pulled out, clear to the outside. Backgammon, hold fast, what still in the tight bunch. What Dark a Vader. horse! Yes, Dark Invader is gaining ground. Mullins in pink and green is gaining. It takes Go Dark on, Invader, Backgammon. Go on, Invader! Go on, Teddy! Go on! It's Dark Invader, first, second, Racing Demon, three, Backgammon, four, We've five, hold fast, Johnny. and Bastillion. We've Dark Invader is the winner by two legs. Ha! He's done it! Good lad! Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends, on this proud and happy night, I want to make an announcement. Dark Invader will race again next winter. So, everyone, look out. But then he will retire and be sent to stud. The stud will be here in India for the encouragement of Indian breeding and racing. Now, I, I intend to build my stables on model lines, and it will be under the management of John Quillen, if he agrees. <laughs> you will be glad to hear that with Dark Invader goes his inseparable other half, his jockey, Ted Mullins. 
who will be our head stud groom, if he accepts. Oh, this is a big day for Indian racing. I thank everyone who's helped to make this the happiest day of my life. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Anything wrong? No. No. Casimir Alaric Bruce. How can there be anything wrong? The stake, money. But it's mine. I earned it. Wasn't it I who had the acumen, the courage? Of course we would have given you Dark Invader back in the end. We just wanted to see if you were generous. That horse was worth a thousand rupees. We are sisters of poverty. Poverty, Mr. Levantine. I gave you a new cart. God bless you, Mr. Levantine. Give it to the nuns, Mr. Levantine. Have you ever been hungry, Mr. Levantine? Oh, it's an infernal nuisance being a blessing. And so expensive. Later that night, we received an anonymous gift of 51,000 rupees. The value of the stake money, plus a mysterious extra thousand. With it, we opened our new infirmary. Two years later, in the Levantine stud, a first foal was born. By Dark Invader, out of fairy tale. They called him Dark Legend. In The Dark Horse by Ruma Godden, dramatised by Leon Orkin, Dervla Malloy played Sister Morag, Nicholas Grace, Mr Levantine, Johan Meredith, Ted, Gareth Armstrong, John Quillen, and Indira Varma, Dahlia. Geoffrey Whitehead played Dr. Mac, Francis Jeta, Sister Barbara, Siobhan Stamp, Sister Ignatius, Nitin Chandra Ganatra, Sadiq, Richard Rees, R. Lee, and David Antrobus, the jockey. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The director was David Hunter. <laughs>